Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be talking about plumage and molt and how it pertains to our songbirds. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be talking about plumage and molt and how it pertains to our songbirds. And here's one of my favorites, the scarlet tanager. And this is the alternate plumage. This is the plumage that would be acquired on the wintering grounds, and it's the breeding plumage that we'll see when the bird returns to us in the springtime. Then in the fall, uh, after the breeding season, another molt will occur, and now those, all those red body feathers are going to turn into yellow feathers, and the bird is going to look quite different before it heads south for the winter. Let's get some basic plumage terminology down so that we all are talking about the same thing. And plumage refers to the bird's feathers, and these feathers produce the colors and patterns that we use to visually identify a bird. Downy plumage is the fluffy feathers that cover the body of a hatching bird. And those feathers will eventually change into juvenile plumage, which consists of the first contour feathers and may be present for only a few weeks or a couple of months at most. And what will that bird will transition into next would be the subadult plumage or immature plumage. And this is achieved through birds, the bird's first full molt and will often closely resemble the adult basic plumage. Basic plumage or non-breeding plumage is the plumage that a bird wears for the longest period of the year. For species that change appearance during the year, it's, the most, it's most often the duller plumage that is worn in fall and winter. Alternate plumage, on the other hand, or breeding plumage, is the plumage that a bird wears during the breeding season. For species that change appearance during the year, is the brightest plumage worn in the spring and into summer. So here's an example I think we can all relate to. This is the American goldfinch. And the top two images show what this bird looks like in its alternate plumage. And we have the female here, and we have the male here. And this is the plumage that would be acquired from its uh, molt before the breeding season. So this would be in the very early spring when this bird would molt into this particular plumage. And so it would carry this plumage all through the breeding season. But at the end of the breeding season, after the young have been raised, uh, this bird is going to go through another molt. And in this case, it's going to become very, very drab in color. You can see the uh, the yellows or olive colors of the, of the adult birds are gone now, and it, they're replaced by a kind of a dingy brown on the back. There's still a little bit of yellow retained here in the face, but otherwise it's a very, very dull bird compared to those alternate plumages of the breeding season. Uh, to take that one step further, uh, first year birds um, or immature birds will be in a basic subadult plumage. So it's very, very similar to the basic plumage. Uh, there's even less yellow here in the face. Uh, the dingy colors of the back and, every, and the under parts are all pretty much the same. Maybe a little bit of yellow are, is showing here in this individual. But the wing bars are going to be buffy instead of white. So very, very similar to basic plumage, but just a slight variation on that theme. Here's another bird that we can commonly relate to, and this is the chipping sparrow. <clears throat> and in this example, I'm actually showing you what the juvenile plumage will look like. And uh, quite often people have difficulty with this. They're not expecting to see all these streaks and spots all over the breast of a chipping sparrow. So they may have a difficult time actually IDing this bird unless you understand that there is this uh, phase that the bird will go through it in juvenile plumage. The facial pattern is very, very similar. In fact, it looks quite similar to what the basic and subadult uh, or immature plumage will look like, which will be the plumage that will soon follow. So the face pattern is there, maybe a little more pronounced than what we saw in the juvenile bird. Um, but all, those, all that streaking or spotting on the under parts is all gone now. And um, this particular image is of a basic adult and um, the subadult or immature plumage would be very, very similar to this. It would just be, instead of being grayish below, there would maybe be a little bit of a brownish wash here in the flanks. So again, this is the plumage that would be acquired after the breeding season is over for both uh, the adult birds and those birds that are tra transitioning out of juvenile plumage. Then after the winter, uh, when we were getting to spring and these birds are coming back, 
uh, before they make that migration, they're going to change into their alternate plumage. And so that's uh, a molt that will occur before migration begins. And here's an example of what the adult bird in alternate plumage or breeding plumage would look like. And so you can see that you know, it now has that rusty cap that we um, are familiar with on chipping sparrows. You can see that very, very bold face pattern with a very bold pronounced supercilium and a bold uh, black eye line. So I've also included here um, an image from the plate uh, in the Sparrows of the United States and Canada by uh, James Rising and illustrated by uh, David Beadle. And in this example here, we, we do see here's our uh, alternate plumage here, which is the adult breeding plumage. And then we have the basic plumage represented here for an adult. And here's the basic subadult plumage. And you can see Possibly you can see that there's just a little bit of a brownish wash represented here. And then here is that juvenile uh, representation as well. So we have all the different plumages represented here. So let's get some basic facts about molts. Uh, so we're talking about the same thing. A molt is the process of replacing all or some feathers with newly grown feathers. And a complete molt in adult birds usually occurs soon after the breeding season and before the fall migration. And this includes all the head and body feathers as well as flight feathers. A partial molt in adult birds is usually confined to the head and body feathers and occurs on the wintering grounds prior to spring migration. So creating new feathers requires a lot of energy. And so the timing for those, uh, the creation of those feathers or the molt um, is tied to uh, trying to avoid other high energy consuming efforts such as migration or actually raising young. So that's why our, the timing of our migrations or our plumage changes or molts are actually uh, after the breeding season is done and before the migration takes place in the fall. And then once again, before the spring migration takes place. So the molt cycle is not the same for all songbird species. Uh, species that have just one complete molt per year would be chickadees and flycatchers, thrushes, vireos, and woodpeckers. And then we have a group of birds that are species that uh, have one complete mold plus one partial mold per year. And that would include our buntings and tanagers and warblers. And there are some examples uh, of birds that actually have two complete molds per year, per year. And those would be things like marsh wren and bobolink. And the reason that these birds go through two complete molds is because they're in an, envi in an environment that has um, a lot of rough surfaces and so there's a lot of abrasion on their feathers so they wear out a lot more so um, they benefit from having that, that second complete molt. So here's an example that I hope we can all relate to yellow rump warbler we do see a lot of those uh, in our spring migration and in fall migration and starting off with on the top we have the alternate plumage which is the breeding plumage uh, of both the male and female. And so this is the plumage that would be acquired uh, on the wintering grounds before they migrate north in the springtime. And typically that would be a partial molt. It would be just the uh, head and body feathers. And then I also have given you an example of what the juvenile plumage looks like. And at least in our region here in Northeastern Illinois, we're not going to see juvenile plumages for the species because this is going to happen on the breeding grounds. And so uh, once again, just like that chipping sparrow, you're seeing really a lot of speckling here, spotting on the front of the bird, on the underparts. Quite different than what you would expect to see on a, on a yellow rump warbler, very, very fine spots. But this bird is going to um, be in this plumage just for a short time on the breeding grounds. And then when it goes into its first molt at the, breed, at the end of the breeding season, it's going to turn into the first basic or immature plumage, which we have represented here. So again, the bird is very, very dull, uh, very little streaking on the front. It has acquired that yellow rump, uh, but the facial pattern is very, very weak and um, it does not compare very well at all as far as uh, brightness to what an adult basic plumage would look like. This would be an adult male here. And so there is a fair amount of yellow here. You do have the yellow uh, rump, but the streaking is heavier. There's a lot more streaking here on the back and it's um, it still has somewhat of a slate color to it as opposed to what we're seeing uh, on, a, on a first basic or immature bird or what the, likely the female would look like as well. 
uh, in comparing the female basic plumage to this image here, you'd probably have maybe a little more streaking here. You might have a little more yellow showing up here in the upper flank, but otherwise they're very, very similar. Here's another warbler example. We have the black pole warbler. And again, the alternate plumages are represented here in the first top images. Uh, this is the alternate plumage of the male. And this is the alternate plumage of the female. And again, these uh, plumages would be acquired through the molt that's going to take place in the wintering grounds before spring migration. So when these birds come up to see us in the spring, this is what we're going to expect to see. After the breeding season is over, these birds are going to molt again and uh, they'll then acquire their basic plumage. And here I have represented the basic plumage of a male black pole, and here's the basic plumage of a female black pole. And our uh, sub uh, adults are also going to look very much like this. So, immature birds, when they acquire their first uh, plumage through their first uh, full molt after the breeding season, they would look very similar to this. Um, even duller, probably. Um, you'd have even less coloration of yellowish olive in here. Uh, just very, very dull birds. So here's the European starling. Um, and I have this example in here because molt is not the only way that a bird's plumage will change. Individual feathers can be lost or replaced outside of the molt cycle. And uh, also feathers that uh, are susceptible to fading from the sun or a combination of abrasion and sun can also cause feather edges to wear down and break off. And that's exactly what's happening with the European starling here. You can see this bird in its uh, basic plumage is actually has all these little spots all over it. If you look very closely, you can see those little buff spots or golden looking spots are all at the very tips of these uh, body feathers. So um, where there is, um, where you have these little pale spots, there's, um, it's missing the pigment of the rest of the feather. And that makes the bird's feathers, at least in those parts, um, more susceptible to breakage. The, the sun will break down the, the structure of those parts of the feather and they actually break off. And so that's how this bird is acquiring its, its um, um, breeding plumage or alternate plumage. It's through all that feather wear. And so all the spots are starting to disappear on the bird. And so if you can recall what a starling looks like in the summertime, you, they're generally all black. So th they are losing all those spots through that um, abrasion and, and, the, and the fact that the sun is, is actually breaking down those uh, little feather edges, especially the pale ones. So there are a couple of exceptions to the rule. Most songbirds achieve their first basic plumage in the year that they are born and then molt into an alternate plumage the following spring. Well, the males of some of our songbirds uh, may not attain that, that definitive adult plumage for a couple of years. And so examples of that would be American Red Start and Orchard Oriole. So here's our American Red Start. And so if we look at this individual here, this is a bird that um, molted into a basic plumage at the end of the breeding season. It migrated south and then on the wintering grounds, it goes through, starts to go through another molt. And at that point, it starts replacing some of its body and head feathers. And they're come, those that are replaced are coming in black. So um, this is how this bird is going to look when it actually returns in migration. And even though it's in a plumage that is not full alternate plumage, um, this bird is still capable of finding a mate and, and breeding in that first year or first breeding year uh, upon its return. Then it's going to go through at the end of the breeding season, it will go through yet another molt and be in its basic plumage. But then when it goes back down to the wintering grounds and comes back up the following spring after a molt, it's now going to be in the full adult male breeding plumage, which we see represented here. The same thing is going on with orchard oriole. That immature bird uh, from the breeding season is going to go through a uh, basic molt uh, in the, at the end of the breeding season. It's going to migrate down south. And then before migrating back up north, it's going to go through yet another molt. And in that case, it's going to acquire um, you know, this little black bib here under the throat. It will not be in complete adult 
alternate plumage such as this bird here. But even in this plumage, it's going to be able to acquire a mate and breed that very first uh, year that is uh, as a, as ever after it has returned from its, um, from its initial first year. So it's again going to then go through a basic molt, head back down south. And this time when it comes back up north after its molt on the wintering grounds, it will look like the full adult that we see here. So some key points to remember, uh, birds will molt their feathers once or twice a year, depending on the species, potentially causing changes in their appearance. And molts can happen at different times for various species. Typically, they occur after the breeding season and again prior to the start of their spring migration. A bird's appearance can change due to replacing individual damaged or lost feathers, and a bird's appearance can change due to feathers fading or through feather wear. Understanding those molt sequences and plumage differences is how certain birds can change throughout the year, and that will aid us in identifying the birds in the field. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.